This video goes with the skeleton note for one, two measures of central tendency. And the first thing that we're going to do is look at some terminology that we're going to be using. So the first one is mode, which is the value that occurs most frequently in a set of data. Uh, you can have bimodal data, which is data with two modes, so two most common numbers. And then you can have a modal class, which is the mode from a grouped frequency table uh, that you'll see in some later examples. The next term is the mean. The mean is the sum of the numbers divided by the number of numbers in a set of data. So we can write that out in words like this. So the sum of our data values divided by the number of data values. And mathematically, we can write it as mu is equal to sigma x over n. This is mu, which represents the population mean, uh, different than the sample mean, which uh, you'll learn about if you get a little bit further into statistics. Uh, here we have sigma, which just means sum of. And then here we have x, which represents our data values. And then finally, we have n, which is our number of data values. Our next term is median, which is the number in the middle when the number in a set of data are arranged in order of size. So the median is, let's see, if the number of numbers in a data set is even, the median is the mean of the two middle numbers. So we can represent uh, the middle term as n plus 1 divided by 2, where n is the number of numbers in a data set. So if n is odd, let's say 13, n plus 1 divided by 2 is going to give us 7. And that means that the median is the seventh term, not the number seven. And then if you have n equals 14, we get our n value to be 7.5. And so that means that the median is going to be the seventh term plus the eighth term divided by 2, so right in the middle. So let's look at an example where we're going to calculate each of those three characteristics for a given data set. So the table we have below shows the number of aces served by tennis players in their first sets of a tournament. Determine the mode, mean, and median for this data. So our first column is the number of aces. Second column is the frequency. And then we need to know our total between those two columns. So if you have four tennis players hitting one uh, ace, that's four aces. Okay, we've got 11 people hitting two aces, so we've got 22. 18 and three, similarly all the way down. 13 and four, seven and five. And then we've got six and two, so 12. Okay. So the other thing that we need to know uh, is how many we actually have in this set. So in order to do that, we're going to add up our middle column. So I'm gonna do this just by showing it here. Four plus 11 is gonna give me 15. 15 and 18 is 33. 33 and 13 is 46. 46 and 7 is 53 plus 2 is 55. So that means that our total in our data set is 55. Okay, um, and then we need to add up our third column here too, which is going to give us 179. So this is going to give us the information that we need to calculate the mean. So we'll do that one first. Mu 
is going to be equal to the sum of our data values divided by the total number of data values that we have. We found those two already. We've got 179 divided by 55. And so we're going to get that mu is approximately 3.25. The mode, we're now looking for the most common number of aces served by tennis players in their first sets of a tournament. So there we're looking for the highest number in the second column. So hopefully you can see that that is 18. That means that my mode is 3. The final statistic, uh, the median. Okay, uh, What we are looking for is our middle term. So our middle term is n plus 1 over 2, which in this case is 55 plus 1 over 2. So that's going to give us, let's see, 56 divided by 2. So the 28th term and if we look we can see that our 28th term happens uh, at 3. So in between these two values, which means it must also be 3. Okay, let's look at another example that has a uh, grouped frequency or a modal class, okay, because uh, your data that you're looking at has a range. So we're going to look for the mean and the mode of the following ages of bus driver data to the nearest year. Uh, one thing to remember is that when the data are grouped, assume all the data values are equally spread out uh, around the midpoint. Okay, uh, And let's just change this here. This should be 30. Okay. Uh, so we've got our frequency. Okay, And what we want to do is find the same Thing. So we want to find out how many times we had someone in the 21 to 25 age bracket. So in order to do that, in our tennis example, we just multiplied the F and the A. Here, because we have a range, we want to find the midpoint first. And then we're going to multiply that by our frequency. So 23 times 11 is going to give us 253. And we're going to go all the way down the column. So find the midpoint. And then we're going to multiply the frequency and that data value. Continuing all the way down. Oops, 364, 1056, 1026, 1247. 816 and 371. Okay. Uh, and we should add here this A value is really the midpoint, okay, um, not actually the column values. So we need to find the mean. We can do that one first. And in order to find the mean, we need the total of our frequency column and the total of our F times A. So if we find our totals, we're going to add this column up to get 137. And then we're also going to add this column up here to give us 5,161. So then we're going to look for our mean, which is the sum of our data values divided by the number of data values that we have. We found those already, so we've got 5,161 divided by 137, and so we find that our mean, so our average bus driver age, is approximately 37.7. In order to find the mode, now we can't just have one age number now we're going to have a modal class because we have a range of values. So in order to find that modal class, 
we're going to look in this column right here and we're looking for the highest number. So I can see that the highest number is right here, which means that my modal class must be 31 and 35. So between those two values is the most common bus driver age. So that's another example uh, with a grouped frequency table. Uh, we're going to do one more problem solving example with Alex and his biology tests. Uh, so he writes five biology tests this year and his marks on the first five tests were 74, 65 and 81. He lost the last two tests but he knows he got the same mark on both and he knows that his mean for the term was 80. Okay, so we're trying to find the score on the last two tests. So what we're going to do is let x represent the mark on the last two tests. And that's going to allow us to set up our equation. We know the totals of his first three tests. And then we know his last two tests he got the same mark. We're going to divide by the total number of tests that he wrote, and that must equal his average. So now we've got an equation to solve. We can collect some like terms, move things around to isolate for x. Alex looked like he worked maybe harder at the end of the term. He got 90 on those last two tests. Good work, Alex. Okay, so you can check out uh, these exercises here in the textbook for some practice on calculating each of those measures of central tendency.